Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. Um, my name is Greg Williams. I'm a, for those of you not at Media Math, I'm a co-founder of Media Math and the general manager of our media products business. Um, today we have an exciting panel event where we'll be tackling the topics such as the future of native advertising, how it impacts the future of marketing and publishing, from, and we'll hear from experts in the industry. Tanuj Joshi, who leads up our global media partnerships team, will be moderating the panel and asking some of the really hard questions. Before I hand it over to Tanuj and our panelists, I can't resist offering a bit of context on how media math and terrific partners like Triple Lift see and shape the world of programmatic marketing. These beliefs are foundational for the introduction of new channels like Native. For us, good marketing begins with a marketer's business goals. Proxy metrics or predetermined channel strategies are a hindrance. Asking the right questions allows us to find the right answers. With goals set, we believe good marketing should be informed by data, including first, second, and third party data, all dynamic and working together to paint the paint the best possible view of the consumer. Through, unified, through a unified view of the customer, the media execution should be customer centric. We do not view media through the lens of channels, but rather activating marketing budgets to communicate to your best customers and prospects in a manner that drives outcomes for your business. This means allowing your programmatic platform to determine how and when and where to reach your customers not a predetermined channel assignment. Imagine a world in which the marketer was blind to channel delivery. How would that change your channel mix? We also believe that marketers must have high quality media scale and access to 100% of their known and unknown audiences across the internet, regardless of protocol. Most of you at Media Math have heard me talk about uh, uh, the world of going protocolless meaning accessing open biddable sources of inventory, and yes, even inventory that is in the walled gardens, all within a single platform. However, it's just not about quality and scale. It's also about instrumenting the marketer's supply chain for privilege, such that the highest value media can be accessed only by the right advertiser at the right time. Finally, we believe that creative components that speak to the consumer provide the linchpin of what makes all these touch points work properly. Creative messages will increasingly be generated dynamically and rendered according to rules established by media providers as opposed to those of industry standards like the IAB. Single asset creative will be made obsolete in exchange for creative componentry that is interwoven into sites and content. Every interaction between a brand and consumer will leverage up to the moment data about the user, the media environment, and the historical sequence of creative components delivered to dynamically render the most relevant message no matter what the medium. Some of our leading clients are doing and some of our leading clients and partners are doing this today. Others are in a period of transition. And in many ways, native marketing represents the edge of that story. I would like to thank all of you for joining this session today. It offers and offer a special thank you to Eric and the Triple Lift team for being such great innovation partners over the last few years. Together, we've worked to expand native protocols. We've worked to build and scale new and custom native ad units. And we've led efforts around market education. With that, we'll kick off the panel and I'll hand it over to Tanuj. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. So let the panel begin. Uh, uh, if, if you guys can give a brief intro about what you do and, and, and about your firms, then we can uh, kick off with the questions. Hi, everyone. Uh, Garrett Dale, and I run our optimization and innovation team over at Kepler Group. Hi, I'm Eric Berry, CEO, co-founder of Triple Lift. Uh, we're a native exchange. Uh, hi there, Michael Lamb, President Media Math. I look after all of our business, corporate strategy, and corporate functions. Hi, I'm Paul Bannister, the Head of Sales for Direct and Programmatic at Cafe Media. Great. 
So the first question I think we should, we should all talk about is you know, set, setting a baseline of what native advertising is. Like how we have uh, four different viewpoints here from the advertiser side, the exchange, the, the bidding side, and from the publisher side. How do you guys each define native in your uh, side of the industry? Go first. Okay. Go for it. Great. Uh, over at Kepler Group, we're we're very much aligned with the IB's definition. Has to uh, the ad unit has to take on the look and feel uh, of the page itself. Maybe it's down to the CSS stylings uh, of fonts and, and backgrounds and, and whatnot. Um, seamless integration. Uh, but then even beyond just the fit, there's also the the functionality part of it as well, which is uh, what we're all searching for, that, that moment when not only does it look like it should be a part of the content, uh, but it's actually adding utility as well. So then everybody wins, the consumer, the publisher, and, and the buyer. Great. Yeah, that aligns um, pretty closely with our own. So basically, we think there's there's three types of native advertising. There's social, there's content, and there's in-feed. As a platform, we focus on in-feed native advertising. Um, but again, we believe that it's not just the, the, the letter of the law about what native advertising must be, but the spirit, which is that it must add value to the user's experience. It must be conducive to the overall user experience that the publisher is trying to provide. And the advertiser has to have a great canvas to tell interesting stories. Uh, let's see. Maybe picking up, Eric, on the spirit of native advertising uh, and building on Garrett's very precise definition. You know, what's important about native from MediaMath's point of view, native is a really interesting evolution in the balance of responsibilities in programmatic. And in lots of ways, it's the uh, return to the publisher, uh, and I'll hand it to, to Paul next, it's the return to the publisher of a bunch of responsibilities that really uh, make the most sense on that side of the equation. The responsibility to create the ideal experience for the consumer, um, not just, by the way, in assembling the creative, but fundamentally in deciding which unit should render not purely on the basis of the CPM or the RPM, but on a longer term view of the audience life cycle. Handing that responsibility back so that we're having a, uh, a far-sighted uh, discussion and decision about what advertising to render. And then of course, uh, you know, near and dear to our heart, there's an important performance dividend in that, which is you know, advertising that's properly integrated, that delivers utility, um, works better for the marketer. And it works better for the marketer on almost any metric. Um, this, of course, is the have your cake and eat it too that Facebook have shown us all uh, you know, with their advertising, uh, that you really can have a better consumer experience and better performance. Uh, I agree with what Michael said on that front. I think just to talk for a second about what we've done, we've purposely gone very slow and native with Triple Lift in particular because we want to make sure that it integrates correctly and that, that the consumer is really getting value from it. And it's not just dumping more ads on the page because I think that right now it works as a great way to really engage people, get consumers to engage with you know the branded content and, and make them feel like there's real value there. And I think if we if we aren't thoughtful about it, it can cause problems. Um, I think to the point of the definition, I agree with the, the three kinds, social content and the ads themselves. And I think a lot of the time when we think about it, the idea of sponsored content versus the actual native ad get kind of mixed together and causes a lot of confusion. And we always try to make sure that when we're talking to whether a client or anybody else, we try to make sure we're, we're clear on exactly what we're talking about. So I think knowing in advance and asking the question is, is really important to make sure we're on the same page. Great. So that's a perfect segue into my next question is that how as an industry or IAB or all four of us together here can come to a better definition or make the users most, more comfortable around sponsored content? Because the users start with uh, your domain, Paul, if they, they are on your website, and we are the ones, power, all three of us here are powering the, the experience. So what are some of the things that are lacking, and how can we improve that in the area of sponsored content? Yeah, I think it, it, it's working together. I mean, it's so, you know, very old story, but I ran the site in 1996 that was the seventh site on the internet to have banner ads on it. Um, and that was cool. Um, and back then, those ads got like a 2% CTR, which is, you know, that doesn't even make sense, except for people misclicking. Um, but it was real, because people were like, wow, this is interesting. I want to see what this has to say, and read more, and learn about it. And slowly over time, that has dove to the point where we are today of point one if you're doing well. Um, and I think a lot of that was because there wasn't a lot of thought put into it and it was a little bit of just kind of the wild west and people putting things. And I think with native, it's incumbent on all of us to work together to make sure that we're trying to keep that quality bar high and make sure that um, 
we are doing a good job for the consumer because I think otherwise we're going to end up in the same situation. Um, and I think I think to what you were saying, Michael, I think I think you know it's great for us to have more control over what goes where, and I think we will try to be thoughtful about it. But I think it's important for all of us to think about how do we make sure this is something that we can really use for the long term that has real value and um, you know works for brands and works for consumers too. Right. Do you guys have do you guys have any kind of guidelines of what you say like? Uh, from the world of sponsored content that you have to explicitly say it, say it in a particular way and things like that? I mean, we have our things that kind of cover the regulatory and consumer, you know, in, in, uh, understanding perspective that are the kind of table stakes that you have to do. Um, we try our hardest to make sure that the content we're creating for brands is really good. Um, you know, to be honest, it's very hard sometimes. Um, we have brands, sales looking today at some of the ones we're running right now. We have, you know, Jimmy Dean, which took a very funny approach and we were able to create create really good, funny content for them that I think worked for the brand and consumers really liked it. Um, we have Ulta Cosmetics that had really engaging content about, um, you know, new brands coming to market and new things that are going on that, that our audience really engaged with. Um, and then we have some that, you know, are harder to do, like insurance companies, where it's like, how do you make that interesting? And how do you make sure that somebody who's going to go there is really going to feel engaged by that? And I think it's about keeping that consumer trust and trying it. And for us, you know, the biggest thing is pushing back on our clients and saying, hey, you know, that's not really the right thing you want to be doing here. And that's not really the way you want to be saying that. That's not really the message you want to put out there and trying to be more consultative than just, sure, we'll take your ads and put it here and, and going through that process on creating the content. And the same goes for the, the native ads themselves in terms of promoting that content and make sure that it fits into the experience and making sure that, um, that again, that it gets clicked on and, and people feel good about what they did. So just flipping the question onto you, you sure. Garrett, for a while. Sure. Like, uh, is is that the same? Like, how do brands really want to be placed alongside content? How much of the how much of an experience are they looking for to be meshed with the content? And uh, in, in this constant push and pull with right. the publishing side, how do you guys view it? Sure. I I mean, native is not necessarily a new thing, and I love the fact that we called out social and and search as well, and we can kind of look to those. Uh, formats channels uh, as well for uh, for guidance right mm -hmm. and so when you when you think about SEM and you think about Facebook you've got folks who have controlled kind of both sides of it right uh, and with that uh, although we all love an open ecosystem we do right but at some level there are advantages to that walled garden as well so and in in this case uh, you've you've you're able to control uh, the ad that appears and also where it's going, yep. right? And so with that, um, you've got high relevancy, uh, whether it's ad quality scores, relevancy scores. Uh, you've got helpful ads, truthful ads, uh, transparency in reporting down to the keyword level. And I, I think as long as we have uh, all of those things that uh, we can then take those best practices and then use that, you know, using media math platform, buying on TripLift, for for example, in, in Cafe. Yep, great. So, oh, I can't let that go. Oh, okay, uh, yes. It's <laughs> uh, a good layup for you. No, no, it's it's perfect, and I, I, love, I love the way you set it up, and maybe you should hand the mic to Eric because he's next on this one. Um, you know, I, the, the analogy is, is super helpful, and I think you're, you're pointing out, in a way, the elephant in the room when we're talking about native, um, you know, which are the um, the closed platforms and Facebook in particular. Um, and uh, as we think about native and as we think about native in partnership with folks like Triple Lift, we have to show and we have to uh, achieve in a two-sided model those same benefits. Um, you know, we have to because, of course, the open two-sided model is better for the marketer, for sure. Um, and, you know, that dividend is there. We got to get it to them. Um, but uh, we have to at least match what the one-sided models are able to do. And that means uh, evolving the dialogue that we have around the bid up. So the dialogue we have around the bid up today is you know, too, uh, too shallow, too commercial, and too crass. It's, uh, you know, it's about who the user is and what am I willing to pay to put the message up there. Um, you know, we don't get the contextual cues that allow us to make smart decisions about which message is likely to perform better, much less, by the way, be accepted by the pub. Uh, and we don't get, or at least do much with, the feedback uh, other than binary feedback about you know, extreme violations. We don't do much with the feedback about you know, whether and where an advertisement is likely to um, be relevant or be perceived as quality. Um, and so uh, what we're really excited about in the 
uh, collaboration with folks like Triple Lift is evolving the standard to deliver on those concepts like a quality score, like contextual cues, so that we can jointly, uh, in a two-sided optimization, um, you know, deliver those uh, those same qualities uh, that the one-sided models are able to to do. Yeah, I think that's that's a great point, and I think um, that gets us. I'll, I'll give you guys a plug here, which is um, you know, I think the if you think about native advertising as a whole. Um, you know, strict adherence to what is and isn't native advertising and, and whose definition is right may or may not be the most valuable exercise. Um, instead, I think the way we think about it is how do we create effective user-centric advertising at scale wherever users consume content? And effective means it's got to be a high-quality, engaging canvas. So we've got to innovate on what makes a good canvas uh, and what what's a good way for an advertiser to tell a great story uh, on a publisher, whatever device they're using, in whatever context they're using it in. Um, and that means we need to communicate with the buying platform in a way where we can say, you know, here are the formats that work well. And, and Media Math has done a great job thinking about, well, how can we take the future of where we think native is going, how can we think about the creative itself and how that unbundles in the native context and how it may you know, render differently in different contexts, how different assets and formats may show up differently. And that extends to the other cues that are going to come in as well, contextual um, device and, and what sort of uh, renderings and, and hints we can pass. Um, because certainly the future of, of native in particular uh, means that you actually are moving past the in the banner world, you simply pass the asset and you render it, and it is what it is. But in the native world, you can do so much more innovation on how you render it unique to each publisher context, what data goes back and forth. And that's something we think about a lot. Similarly, we think about user-centric advertising, and that means ads that are conducive to the publisher experience and conducive to the user experience. And that means we need an alignment of expectations between the user, the advertiser, and the publisher. So the advertiser needs to have con confidence that what they're passing is going to render correctly. So we make sure that we provide uh, proper assurances through the technologies we provide. Similarly, we work really hard with the publisher to make sure that the ads render as well as they can given what's passed through. But most importantly for the user, we want it to be well marked as uh, sponsored so that the user understands what they're getting into and so it's a sustainable ecosystem because if you look at what's happened with uh, sort of more high impact especially mobile ads and Google's recent move to ban some of the most high impact formats because overall they were you know not very conducive to the user experience we really want this to be a conducive experience that actually creates um, more power for all the different players in the open ecosystem that's incredibly important for us. Great. So, so I think that's a perfect segue into my next question. Is that you know in 2013, 2014, we had we had like mobile as the um, uh, mobile is the new keyword. Like, how, how do you guys perceive as n the involvement of native, of, you know, publishing and advertising coexisting together in this world? Because the content creation and ads being delivered now are a part of a single technology stack, for for lack of a better word. And is it is it new channels? What? How do you? see a native ad in 2018, your ideal native ad, and, and what channel would you think would that be? Like, is, it, is it virtual reality, is it, or is it, is it still the mobile device is still, and then across, across the walled garden, so your ideal 2018 native ad? You, you guys may have better context than me, but I think sort of it's almost anywhere. Like the, the it's a it's a format that can work in almost any environment, whether it's virtual reality or your phone, uh, and, and everything in between. Um, so I think that that's probably the vision is is it's kind of everywhere because it is a way to get that good content in front of a consumer at any experience in a way that feels natural and fits in and 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 provides value. Okay. Mike. I have sort of a crass and commercial thought uh, to the, you know, to the earlier dialogue. Look, for us, native is this uh, native is this omni-channel savior done right, which is uh, I don't even need to know the answer to your question, right? It allows us to have that Google or Facebook moment when we stop allowing people to target mobile, right? And instead, it's just advertising, uh, and it flows to where the user is, and it renders, you know, in the best possible way. Um, Fundamentally, uh, the barriers there around creative, around uh, the specific protocols, we have a chance here to you know, abstract away from those things and really make the first sort of post-device 
um, you know, advertising format, um, which uh, would really suit us. So that would be great. I'll, I'll take one. <laughs> I think that's that's really prescient. Which is, um, you know, native advertising doesn't have to be a thing. Like it, it doesn't have to be a special thing. It should, in in our mind, it's user -cent effective user centric publisher monetization at scale wherever users consume content, as I, as I mentioned. But that means wherever users consume content is a fundamental piece. So if it's virtual reality, if it's HoloLens, if it's whatever. Um, you know, it just needs to be effective and user centric and really built to the experience that that device is trying to cater to. So uh, pop ups and interstitials and the like, that's not our business. You know, there, there are people in that business. Um, but for us, we believe that it's got to be integrated into the experience that a publisher is trying to build for whatever platform and however you can do that. Um, and that, that does raise a lot of complexities, which is, you know, those experiences are going to look and feel really different. And so how does a buying platform and a publishing platform, um, you know, how do they align on expectations? And, and I think to your point, you know, the, the devices, the, uh, complexity, it can, the dream that we're all hoping to get to is this maybe post device, post mobile targeting versus display targeting versus whatever. And just say, you know, we're going to target on these characteristics meaning we're going to try to get this message to these types of users with this campaign, and we're going to do it in the way that's the most effective for each device without necessarily saying, oh, we have to do it special for mobile in this way or special for HoloLens in that way. And, and that's the dream. Garrett, how, how would brands want? Yeah, I mean, you guys did a, did a great job with that one, <laughs> of, as of course you would. Um, I just always love the old saying, you know, you've got to fish where the fishies are kind of thing. Like, and if the fishies are on, on messenger apps, uh, you know, we'll be there in, in some native way. If the, the fishies are in VR and augmented reality, we'll be there. Um, it, yes. Uh, you know, if if you're just going to have this, this new medium, the next virtual reality, and you're going to start throwing 970 by 250s on the top of it, like that's not going to be great. Right. Yep. So um, I, I think we're, we're all aligned on that. Uh, again, going back to adding value, um, being truthful, being transparent, uh, we'll be able to serve ads that actually uh, help people and help brands and help publishers. And we all win. Just to add one thing to that, I think the point of experiences is, is really good. Where I think done right native delivers great experiences. And when you think about it, you, virtual reality is the sort of silly but good example. A consumer going to a branded virtual reality experience done well that makes them feel really good about the brand, how much more valuable is that than seeing a 970 by 250? Ten times, a hundred times, a thousand times? Like it's it's a lot more. So I think if it's done right and it's connected and it, it is, do, does deliver that experience, it's it's amazing and it's supremely valuable for the brand and for the consumer. Cool. So so that's that's about the future. But you know, if you could dial it down to the to the present, right? Like we have we have an open RTP 2.3 protocols and we have we are we still are in the protocol world. So I want to get your thoughts on what can brands and uh, buying platforms, publishers, and exchanges do now to make sure that they are, you know, going in the right direction, unlocking budgets right now. So, what's what's the now? What, what your two cents on execution now? I'll just go first since I'm holding the mic over here. Um, I, I think a lot of the things Mike and Eric. Yes, we're sorry. We just met today. <laughs> uh, Mike and Eric were we're talking about are, are critical, right? Uh, uh, opening up the the type of things they're they're passing to each other in order to better inform uh, our decision engine, right? Yeah. Which would be a platform like MediaMath. Um, so once that is done and, and tools are improved so that we understand the value of media, we also uh, can use our resources internally at agencies more efficiently to uh, get these ads live and, and uh, do creative copy testing, landing page testing quicker than, than we do today. That will all be extremely helpful as well. There's also a, a piece on the, on the actual brand side that's often tough uh, for us to break through in a lot of the native buying that we're doing today. Because if, if you're working with folks who are really used to serving a lot of display ads, let's say, which you know we already talked about the CTR on, on display ads, which isn't great. That doesn't mean there's not value there, but the CTR uh, is not great, and, and you know, people still love clicks, right? That's that's how the internet started, right? On a mm -hmm. seventh website, that was awesome. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think the more that we are uh, 
able to create these experiences and, and use technology to drive kind of meaningful click throughs, uh, that actually just makes it a lot easier for these brands, finance departments and, and analytics teams <laughs> to say, OK, and, and put more money behind it. I know that's crazy, but that, that's still a little bit of a, a wall right now um, where we can continue to run um, placebo tests like you guys have in the platform, uh, other lift tests, dark market tests. We can do all this stuff and essentially model out the lift. Uh, but oftentimes it still comes back to like, did you drive that click that went to the site, which then led to a conversion, which led to someone uh, paying and becoming a subscriber over and over and over. So um, there's still imagine who you're channeling. <laughs> <laughs> there's definitely still uh, still work to be done on that front. But uh, we are definitely making a lot of headway and native is a huge part of all of our plans right now. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's really similar to our kind of pitch when, when we talk to advertisers we say you know hey what are your KPIs um, and let's let's see if it works um, and you know just thinking about it do you think this 300 by 250 off on the side where people aren't looking is going to do better or worse than this ad that's in the feed where people are looking um, and test it right and you know 99 times out of 100 it, it works and we it, we it was fundamental to us from day one that we could be tested against existing advertising metrics on a KPI by KPI basis uh, so that people could see with low risk with AB testing with whatever optimization methodology that they want with whatever data parameters that they want that they can test and they can see the actual results now if they're trying to do branding fine that's a different question and however they'll do it that's a more complex involved question but then it's a question of okay well, what's stopping you? Maybe assets. So how can we work with you on assets? Um, and, and a lot of times the assets are a lot simpler than, than they think. They've already got the assets on their Facebook page, on their Pinterest page, in uh, a magazine ad that they've been running, on their FBX uh, campaigns that they've been running. Okay, and then the next question may be, how do I know, given that uh, it's going to run on a thousand different publishers and each of those publishers are going to look and feel different. How do I know that it's going to look right? And so we've worked really hard on creating technology to create previews to make sure that they can actually have the comfort that they need to go live. And so, you know, for us, it's been it's been a question of sussing out the actual concerns and building technology that addresses those. And, you know, there's, it's a conversation and there's a lot of advertisers and it's a new thing, um, but it's less new than it was. And certainly Facebook uh, did a lot of the hard work for us and we thank them. Um, but, you know, I, I think more and more of the same is going to go a long way. Uh, great. Well, I'm just going to make that a little more specific to MediaMath and to the MediaMath teams in the audience. Um, you know, we're working really hard to put more of this kind of supply in the platform, um, you know, lots of different ways. And we're doing that because we believe it's the future and we believe it performs. Um, so we're putting it all into the platform. We need your help to create the fluidity such that the spend can follow the supply. Um, because, you know, as you know, the avails by themselves don't necessarily get the spend. Two things we need you to do with your clients. Uh, we need you to work with your clients on the assets. Um, and, uh, you know, all of Eric's points are extremely well taken. Um, we have great codex out there, by the way, that shows that covering these formats delivers more performance. And you can take and make a really clear case to your clients that says having the creative optionality uh, to render in these high performing environments delivers better outcomes. Uh, so you got to fight that good fight, you know, with the clients and, and with their agencies to get the creative assets. And then uh, you have to work on the goal articulation. So we have to get to a world where, you know, at the strategy level, the strategy is trying to accomplish something rather than targeting a white list of, you know, URLs on a specific campaign with a CPM uh, bid because there's no fluidity there. Um, so in this has already happened, but in the coming months, the amount of, you know, native supply in the platform is going to double and double again. Um, and we need to make sure uh, we'd be doing our clients a disservice if we weren't fully exploiting that. Uh, um, Tanuj can put the supply in there, but you all with your clients have to create the fluidity to allow them to exploit it. The uh, sort of practical thing I'll add is private marketplaces, um, which we're a big believer in in general. I think for native is a great way to get started because it allows you to have that direct communication between the two parties about 
here's what we're trying to do. Here's what our goals are. Here's how we're going to be doing this. Here's, here's what the creative pieces are going to be. And then the publisher can say, here's where it's going to run. Here's the context. Here's all the other kind of factors that play out on our side. And have the ability to have that conversation and optimize and work with somebody rather than, rather than kind of being out in the wild where I know, you know, your platform and your platform do a great job of kind of making it less wild, but I think the ability to have a conversation uh, can go a long way to make things work better and be a good test bed for kind of launching up from there. Yep. Yeah, just on that note, we have a sales enablement session on the 21st where you'll explicitly highlight the capabilities of the MediaMat Triple Lift platform. We're launching a native app and uh, for easy creative execution, so please take advantage of that to understand the end-to-end -end workflow of this. Great. So that was our panel. Uh, and how are we doing on time? Good. Okay, we could probably take like a couple of questions from the audience at, at this point. Any, anybody have any question for our panelists? Justin. Uh, how much standardization have you seen in the set of components that are being requested by the sites and publishers to help you know, unify the, the environment? Yeah, um, that's a great question. And I think there's there's two ways to think about that. And so the IAB has started to create um, a baseline of, of specs. And so in 2.3 and 2.4, they created the native sub-spec 1.0 and 1.1, which list um, you know some things like the image, caption, click-through heading. And those are great. But the way we think about it is that's the most baseline set of creative specs that you can do. So um, while, you know, if, if nobody's doing native, it's good to have an, an understanding of the absolute minimum that are required. And certainly a lot of people are, are able to meet that baseline minimum and understand what those are. And those are basically what, what Facebook's already, uh, asked for. And that's not a coincidence. So, you know, the image caption, click through heading, things like that. Um, but then if you think about where we want native to go, we don't necessarily want native to just be this stagnant platform. And so uh, that's where I think that the, the media math approach uh, aligning really well with the triple lift approach has, holds a lot of promise, which is it's not necessarily going to be the case that everybody standardizes immediately on the best case outcome. Because if we want to innovate, if we want to innovate on the formats that we make available on our platform, and if MediaMath wants to innovate on the formats that it makes available to its buyers, and we want to continue to innovate together on how we render things, on how the different formats work with the different publishers, create special deals so that Cafe can make special deals available for different types of formats that aren't necessarily part of the IAB specs that render differently in different contexts. That you can't necessarily do with the baseline set of specs. And so that's where we look to innovative partners to actually meet what we think the um, the future of the uh, IAB or native spec is going to be. And so for us, uh, we view it really as two different ways, which is the baseline MVP native, which everyone can do, and then how can you innovate on top of that? Right. Anything else? Scott? So this is going to be mostly at Eric again, but I'd love to chime in if you have anything to say. Uh, but kind of finally on that question, you answered part of this uh, in your response there, which is great. Um, do you kind of have a fear of like over standardization, whereas those uh, native ad units just become another ad unit. They just happen to be in stream. Is there any fear of that? And how are you kind of um, combating that so that uh, consumers don't get numb to see these ad units in stream? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And, and that's something we, we talk about a lot, which is, um, you know, again, in the most base case, you can say, is a native placement, one that's part of the, you know, the, the fundamental way that a consumer engages with a publisher site, is that ever going to get to the standard that we uh, have for banner ads, which are where people have been trained to not look? That's very unlikely. Um, is it then going to get, we can then have a question that's um, what sort of innovation can we have on top of that? So it's certainly the case that if you just have these um, minimal uh, native placements, that's fine. That's much better than a lot of what we've got today. And and that's great. But that doesn't mean that has to be where we stop. Um, because if we want to create a more immersive environment for customers to interact with what a brand offers, then we want to make that as easy as possible for the brand to get scale, for it to be native and fundamental to the each different publisher's experience. So 
you know, if you really, a simple example would be a carousel, right? If you want to have a carousel unit on 10,000 different publishers, uh, it's, that's really hard to do unless you've got some technology partner helping to make that happen. And the more and more different formats, and that's just a simple, like, extension of the base uh, format. But the more you want to get involved there, the more videos, the more interactivity, the more canvas-like uh, behavior you want to add, um, then I think there's a lot of value to moving away from those base uh, standards. And that's why you see almost, you know, you look at Facebook and what they're doing with their Canvas ads. Uh, they've certainly seen that, yes, there's value to those native placements, but there's a lot more value to adding a lot of interactivity, especially because, as we've discussed, a click is a click, and that is what it is. And we all know that it's a deeply flawed metric. And so the more you can create ways for consumers to engage beyond a simple click, I think there's a ton of value there. And that's where we're trying to drive the, the platform. All right. Thank you, everybody. And uh, a recording of this would be available on blog.mediamat.com soon. And thanks again for joining.